Jacksmith. Hi, I'm Matt Pierce. We are here live with The Forge, TechSmith's new web show where we're going to be talking about screencasting, screen capture, and all sorts of fun stuff. On today's show, we're going to be talking with John Udell, Microsoft Evangelist, and some uh, might say that he has had a large influence on screencasting, including its name. We're also going to be reviewing the Blue Yeti microphone, telling you how that works with screencasting, and I'm going to be talking with the fantastic Betsy Weber, Chief Evangelist for TechSmith Corporation, about some cool things that she's seen and noticed with screencasts that are out there in the wild. So let's get started. We're going to be uh, talking with John Udell. So let me get this up and here we go, John. How are you today? Doing great. How's it going? Do doing well, thanks. So John, is, as I mentioned, is a Microsoft evangelist. He's also had a long time history uh, working with screencasts, including the heavy metal, metal umlaut screencast, which is well known. Betsy linked to it on the blog. Um, John, what I wanted to start off with, though, I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, I guess, how did we get the term screencasting? I had gotten interested generally in the medium of online video while I was working for InfoWorld. And I had had some experience with video capture and screen capture from years before when I used to do some product demos. but. Back then, it wasn't possible to distribute that stuff widely. And so when I came back around again, I don't know, four years ago or whatever it was, and saw that now you could make these things and they could just be available to anybody over the net, it really was a game-changing kind of revelation for me. And I, I just got really interested in the notion that there's a lot of stuff that we, that we know in our, in our heads and in our hands that is not so easy to express by writing it down and using static pictures. So there's a lot of, uh, of what I would call embodied knowledge that we can demonstrate to people more easily than we can break it down and describe it step by step. And, uh, and so I, I saw screencasting as a way to do that for a variety of kinds of genres of software explanation or even really the, the exploration of internet culture, which is what I think the, the heavy metal umlaut video was about. You know, it wasn't how to use Wikipedia. It was what is it like to be engaged with this process where there's a bunch of people collaboratively working on these documents. So in, ter in terms of, uh, you know, I, I can definitely see where, you know, like the cultural stuff is really important. Uh, and that was... I th I've actually went back and I rewatched that that particular screencast, and you know, it, it, the nice thing is it held up, and it, that information can be transferred continually on. Um, I guess, w in terms of the tr the term, you had some the the name screencast. You actually had some influence with that process, right? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit where the name actually came from? Because it could have been lots of different things, I imagine. Yeah, there was. Uh, well, what happened was. Somebody commented on my blog after I'd gotten interested in the subject and said, there really ought to be a name for this process. And so it wound up that we had a, a kind of a call for names and a bunch of people 
wrote in with with all, all kinds of things. You know, I mean, the list is on my blog, but I mean things like Screedio and I don't know. I mean, all <laughs> kinds of variations of screen and cam and video and demo and app and uh, you know pretty much every combination of those things that you can imagine. And a couple of different folks recommended um, Screencast, and so that's the one that stuck. Great. I, 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 I'm going to ask you this, and you might not remember, were there any ones that just stood out to you as like, wow, that's not even close to what we're talking about? Any like, names that were just like so off? I'd have to go back and look at the list. I mean, I think they were all pretty plausible. And uh, it, it's interesting, actually. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. On the one hand, I think names do matter a lot. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, I think that at a certain point in history, you just need to have a name for something. And it almost doesn't matter what that name is. So, for example, I remember when the term Ajax came into being. And I don't think that the word Ajax in itself is particularly compelling or, you know, I'm not sure it's about the word. It's, it's just that at a certain point, there's a, a concept that's in the air and people need to synchronize, you know, kind of rendezvous around that with, with, a, with a term. So it was just time for there to be a term and the term happened. Okay. That uh, I guess in terms of your experience, so you, you've seen screencasting really evolve through its history, right? You've, you were there kind of at the beginning, got to the point where it needed that name. I guess what are some of the things about screencasting nowadays? Is there anything that really stands out to you as being kind of exciting developments in that, that kind of realm of possibility? Well, I think the most rewarding thing for me is to see how it's become the case that virtually no software product can be introduced without the obligatory screencast, which is explaining what the thing is and what it does. And uh, I think that that's, that's really cool, you know, that that's just become a standard expectation of how you introduce a new piece of software. Um, the one that I, I, that I remember the most was the, the Rails demo that you may have seen. Mm -hmm. And it I mean, I, well, I'll never be able to go back and prove this, but I just have a really strong hunch that that the way that that screencast got out there and showed people what was possible with Rails had a lot to do with the surge in popularity that we saw. And you know, if it hadn't been possible to encapsulate that experience and show it in that way, it would have been harder for for that to happen. Yeah, it definitely seems like screencasting has had a, a, an influence on, uh, especially software development. Um, what about sites like YouTube and Vimeo, Vimeo, these other, you know, these places where people can put that? Do you think that's changed the game at all for screencasting? Yeah, I think it has. It's, it's unclear to me whether if you do something which is of interest to a particular audience and a fairly narrow audience, so something specialized in the realm of software, let's say, and you make a screencast about that, it's unclear to me whether there's a real benefit in having it on YouTube versus anywhere else, because in the end, there's a small number of people for whom that will be interesting, and they're going to tend to be able to discover the thing fairly easily no matter where it sits on the internet. But, uh, you know, I mean, YouTube is convenient for a lot of people, and I've noticed over the last few years it's gotten more capable of showing screencasts it used to be kind of lame in terms of the resolution that you could get. Right. Now right, that's right. better. So, yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, I can see where just that distribution, some people, you know, I don't have my own website, so it makes it easy. But uh, I, I, I hear what I'm hearing is that if you're in a specialized kind of niche anyway, you're going to know your, who your audience is and you're going to get that message to them, and whether it's on your site, some other site, that's really less important at this point. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, one of the questions that, uh, is, as I was talking to different, some different folks about like, what should we talk with you about, uh, someone wanted to know, what are some things that inspire you? And, let's, and we can kind of couch that in terms of screencasting. When you're going to make a screencast, what kind of things do you look to try to do with those? And try to, how, you know, what inspires you in terms of creating them? Well, I think the biggest inspiration is the general notion that the internet affords us with a, a way to share what we know and to share it in a way that is infinitely scalable. So if I have knowledge of something that I can demonstrate and, you know, screencasting or, or video, if, you know, I'm, sh if I'm showing somebody how to repair a lawnmower, right, that's all, that's all in the same category for me, right? It's, 
there's I've got this chunk of, of uh, embodied knowledge, and I want to make that available. I want to open up my brain and make a piece of what is in there available to anyone who, who would care. And uh, that, I think, we're still, I feel like we're still in the early phases of that. I'll give you a, a reference to the most inspiring thing I've seen recently, which is the Khan Academy. Do you know about that? I, I do. Actually, I, I just yeah. I watched some, uh, some of the videos just uh, the other day. Yeah. So for people who, who haven't seen it, Sal Khan is a guy who is a passionate educator, but he's not a teacher. He makes math screencasts, um, which are tutorial in nature, and has now accumulated, I don't know, 1,500 of them at Khan Academy, which happens to be hosted on YouTube, but that's neither here nor there. And it is incredibly high quality stuff. He takes you through you know, algebra, physics, calculus, uh, basic chemistry, all kinds of things. And it really, I think, is pointing the way toward the kind of transformation that is possible and of course desperately needed in the realm of education. Because what Sal figured out is I could go and be a teacher and I could talk to 30 people at a time, but that doesn't scale. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I do this process, right, I, can, I can capture the best of what I'm capable of, and it can scale out to hundreds of thousands of students, which is, in fact, what's happening in his case. So I, I, that, I'm, I'm so impressed by that. Yeah, so definitely the, the scalability of screencasts is greater than that one-to-one, -one, and uh, that's a, for, I think that's a really powerful, powerful concept. So, John, I appreciate your time. We're actually uh, running out of time here. So, uh, any last words you want to share with anyone that's uh, trying to get into screencasting or trying to do more with screencasting? Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd offer this observation, which is that we have a tendency in the tech world to do things because we can. So, now we can do screencasts, and so a lot of the times we do them, maybe a little bit gratuitously. So, I would, I would invite people to focus on doing the things where the medium of screencasting really adds value. And that's not always the case. So you know, just because you've used the medium doesn't mean that you've used it to its best ability. So you know, I would invite people to think broadly when you're trying to communicate stuff about having a portfolio of methods. And those methods still include text and they still include static images and they still include you know conventional documentation um, but they can be augmented now with this other medium and I think that the best thing is to use all of those things in the appropriate ways and combine them in a, in a fluent way. Well great we well we appreciate your time and I appreciate that advice because as someone who does uh, technical communication at times I, I agree that there's a lot of different tools in your tool chest so Again, thank you for your time, John. We want to thank, have everyone, you know, if you get a chance to go check out some of John's stuff that he's doing. It's, there's some great stuff out there. Maybe you can go check out the old list of names that uh, Screencasting beat out. So thanks for your time, John. Sure, thanks. So now, coming up next, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about the Blue Yeti microphone. Chris McQueen, who is not here, he's actually out on a bike riding across the state of Michigan. He's going to walk us through some of the things that we can do with it. But before that, we're going to take a quick break.